First ball, Hadley. So Richard Hadley has the bowling downwind. It's quite a stiffish northerly breeze. Rabaka looking for the first run. He'll have it too. He'll probably have two, in fact, as Ken Rutherford does the chasing. And logs a good return back to Ian Smith. But the first run's come to two in the air in the second over. And a scored by Prabaka. Hit very fine by Prabaka. This could be the first boundary. The outfield is quick. And Prabaka hitting it just wide of Ian Smith has picked up four runs. Nicely clipped away. Well wide of Smith as you can see. Single call for it. Larson very quick. And not sure about that. Did the ball hit the stumps? The ball was... I'd it's like very much to see that again because the ball was loose after um, Smith had taken off the bales. I think he may have taken off these gloves unless he knocked the ball on. Let's watch. He threw the ball at the stumps, and it was all right. Very clever piece of work by Ian Smith. It was awkward for him, but Raman is out, and New Zealand have struck early. Mandrake the new batsman, facing Sneddon. It says Raju on his, on his back. It's hit in the air, but it's over the top, away out through mid-wickets. That should go off to the boundary line. Good shot from Manoj Prabhakar as Steve Woodward signals four. Well, the Indians prepared to go over the top of uh, the inner ring, as we've seen all tour on this occasion, just picking the ball up. Didn't hit it that well, but this outfield's very quick here at the basin. It's been dry in Wellington, as it, as it has in most other places. Nicely forced away this time by Mandraker. Larson has the chase. Jones, they will get there first. And uh, two runs for Mandraker, just angling it really, away down back with a point. Nicely cut away by Mandraker. Thompson is the fieldsman, he's got a good throw, they won't try it, look at that, that's a great throw. Magnificent piece of fielding from Shane Thompson. Prabaka thrashing it away through the covers, that'll go to the fence. It was too wide from Thompson. Well, it's Matt Thompson, think of it. His first ball had a wicket in, Dun in Dunedin. His first ball in Wellington is thrashed through extra cover by Prabaka, who really chases after anything that's tossed up to him. He wants to really get after it if it's thrown up. And well, that's wide again from Morrison. Prabaka manages to get it away down towards third man, but that's Thompson again. Look at the throw. Oh, it's marvellous cover. That's a fabulous throw. Remember, he's throwing into the wind. He's right on target again. Good running here by the Indians. Kevin Larson in quickly from the offside. But he can't prevent a single. And these two pushing on. In fact, the 50. Up for India. down on the left side. It's gone fairly fine. Martin Stenton covers a lot of territory but can't stop two. What a marvellous piece of fielding there because Martin Stenton is not what you might call in the first flush of youth and I can think of many fielders of his age who would have let that go through. He's not the most athletic uh, natural mover anyway but he got both hands to it, kept his eye on the ball and saved two runs. Oh short, wide, cut by Mandrake four runs. Not a good delivery from Thompson. Mandrake cashes in. Oh, this has gone fine. This will run away for four. Expensive over this one. This is a much better over for India, isn't it? Uh, that lovely square cut and now a leg glance and um, things really coming on. But when we get a chance in the next over, 
Um, I'm still a little. I mean, the, obviously, the, I suppose the object you need all of giving these runs away in Canterbury in um, Christchurch was to try and uh, bring the ba side batting up with the chance of victory, so they, 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 they would then get themselves out. Quite. But doesn't that really, in a sense, deny all that's gone on on the first few days of the match? In fact, they'll come back for three. So this really is proving a good over for India. Oh, it's in the air. He could be caught. Here's Martin Crow, mid off. Prabhaka looking to hit Danny Morrison over the top. Just spooned it up in the end. Martin Crow, a straightforward catch at mid-off. So the second Indian wicket, and this is how it happened. Trying to hit it over the top, and hit it high on the bat. He didn't get any carry on it at all. Martin Crow, straightforward catch. So Prabhaka, the opening batsman, gone for 36. Did stop on him a fraction that, do you think? Or would he just play not a very good stroke? I just wondered if it... Um Yes, the way he played it, one gets that impression, although it doesn't really look like it, does it, Henry? Well, he, he seemed to check his stroke at the last... You know, he, uh, he hit it, obviously, the wrong place, the bat, part of the bat, but he, he, he checked it, whereas if he'd gone right through with it, he might well have cleared the fielder. The very experienced Dilip Van Saka makes his way to the crease. He's been disappointing this tour, Henry. We had a glimpse of him the other day, didn't we, at uh, Lancaster Park against Australia, when he and um, Azaruddin added 52 pretty good runs. Seems to get his front foot a long way across to the offside and play round his pad. It seems to restrict him hitting the ball that solidly. I suppose, I mean, he's a very good player out of form, but he is getting on a bit, isn't he? Yes, indeed. I and mean, he's well into his 30s now. Exactly what you said. He's out. He's out. That was exactly what you said. Uh, coming for playing right round the front pad, wasn't he? Yeah, exactly. That front foot came across to the offside. He tried to play around for a straight delivery. And umpire Brown Cowan says that's out. So the third Indian wicket has fallen. And this is how it happened. Very cool. Look at that front foot. Trying to hit it into the onside. It was straight hitting, say, a middle and leg. And umpire Cowan says that's out. Well, Henry, we've got Ezra uh, in one ball later than we thought we might have him. Well, I wonder if Ben Saka was wired to us for sound. <laughs> oh, good shot. Beautifully timed by Ezra And that just runs away. That's remarkable. Good shot. Wonderful timing, wasn't it? Absolutely glorious. The stroke of the day to me. A marvellous stroke there. It really was Azaruddin at his best. A beautiful, natural timer of the ball. He just hit through the line, found the gap, and it was as though he sort of caressed it away. But it was lovely. Azaruddin on seven, facing Morrison. It's past great batch in the covers. The outfield is quick, but so is Gavin Larson. Two for the Indian captain takes him to nine. Crow tries at the stumps, but Azruddin is home. Here's Jeff Crow, good solid direct hit. Crow moving quickly and from short cover, but Azruddin very quick out of the blocks at the non striker's end. And he had to be quick, didn't he? No room for error there. So Sneddon has five men inside the circle, four out on the boundary. It's past Hadley in the gully. Thompson can't get to it. It's down to the boundary for four. Good shot. Sneddon just giving Andreka a bit too much width there. A very nicely played cut shot. End of the over. Andreka 36, 92 for three. I think Gavin Larson's run-up described the other day. Peter is a fire walker's run-up. And I think that aptly sums it up, doesn't he? Tiptoes up to the wicket. Yes, he's a wee tippy toe but he delivers well, he gets as high as he can and has a good control of his line and his length and he really has come on very well during this um, series just coming in to, for his first international series To crow at mid-wicket, he shows up the stumps, has a direct hit, he's out Brilliant 
piece of fielding by the New Zealand captain. And Mandraker has run out. Martin Crow with a sensational piece of fielding. Picked it up and then had to pivot. About 45 degrees and then shy at the stumps at the bowler's end. And Mandraker, who went for the quick single, has run out. Well, you see, he hit it too well to Crow. It was wide of him that in brilliant fashion, Crow ran to his right, threw to his left, and you can't even see Mandraker in the picture. Just see his bat. So if he'd hit it quieter, he'd have had more chance because Crow would have had to go and had to have gone further to get it. Beautiful piece of fielding from Martin Crow. And look at a lovely position from Steve Woodward too. Look how quickly he got around there. And back into the Indian batting lineup today, the 16-year-old Sachin Tendulkar left out of the game against Australia on Saturday. And a testing time for him, the 28th over. And he does have a run, finally, Tendulkar. And he'll feel better for that as Martin Sneddon does the fielding. Here's Gavin Larson now. Single call for, but no. Yes, they do go in the end. Hadley missed fielding. Azaradine went early, then went back. And in the end, they got it quite safely. So the 100 comes up in the 32nd over. Force nice. Wasn't that lovely, Azaradine? It's a long boundary out there. And they'll have time for three, as Rutherford did the chasing. And it looked effortless from Azaradine. He got three runs for it. It's nicely played by Azaradine. That's beautifully timed. As Thompson went a bit wide that time. And Azaradine puts it away to the fence for four. And that's the total 114 for four at the end of 33. Yes, well, Richard Hadley back into the attack, and uh, he's had five very good overs at the beginning of the innings, conceding only ten runs. There we are. So a difficult time for India to get this man away. Very experienced, knows where to put the ball. Well, that's a good ball. Swinging Yorker, and they both at one end. Got to be a run out. As a resilient score. The youngster said nothing, Azardine said let's go, and the captain keeps going, run out. Well, absolute tragedy for India, Azardine hits a very full length delivery, in fact it was Yorker length, to mid on, takes off for the single, young Tendulkar just sat on his back there, and they were both at the same end, I thought that Tendulkar might step out of his crease because it was more important that Azardine stay in, he didn't do so. So Ezra Dean leaves the park and leaves Tim Dolphin to bat on. Oh boy, there could be some words there later. Let's have a look at it. Well, here we are. Very full-length delivery. Dug it out, as you see. Took off. Kendalka came back again. Ken Rutherford, the man. Down to Smith. All on his own. And it was the slow death. So Tendulkar ruminating at the bowler's end as Kapil Dev comes out. That's a major blow for New Zealand. Azaradine was the man who could really have looked at that total. Hadley to Tindalka. Beautifully driven. That's a magnificent shot. Four runs. Yes, lovely shot from Tindalka. That's the way to play it. Straight back, straight down the ground. Right up to him and he hit it straight back. Richard Hadley starting the 39th over. Tendulkar heaving away through mid-wicket. Great backs is chasing, but it's well struck. Four runs. So Gavin Larson now to start his ninth over. Tendulkar slogging. 
It's in the air. Jones is racing around after it. And good fielding by Andrew Jones. Cuts it down to two. Tendolka really charging, Larson. Here he comes again. Oh, that really was humming. That's four. Just about drilled it straight through, Gavin Larson. <laughs> that was a superb shot, really. That was the shot of a batsman who was in, who's been around for a heck of a long time and is prepared to come down the pitch, meet the medium pacer on the half volley and just thump it back past him. That would have been a miracle if Gavin Larson could have got a hand on it. Tendolka really charging now. Oh, he's lobbed this. That's a clever shot. No! He just held back and just lobbed it over Martin Crow and short of Danny Morrison. It was a clever shot as long as he didn't try and take two for it. You've always got the feeling that Tendelka is just a little bit uh, buoyed up by the occasion and, he, and he's carrying on through emotion rather than from the cold realism of technique. But of course, he's an inexperienced player, a very good player. been a very good over indeed for India with two fours and three other runs taken from it and Larson still with two balls to go and remember that Larson has bowled very well. Capital Dev just seemed there that there was a chance to hit the ball into the biggest gap in the field so it is a problem for Crow now. So it's the youngsters from the respective sides going against each other. 21 year old Shane Thompson against 16 year old Sachin Tendulkar. deserve to succeed that was hit over the head of Martin Crow who's at fairly deep mid on and into the area which was totally unprotected but really Tendalka is just blazing on his emotion now he, he's a lovely player but he's just going for them and you can see Capital there, there having a word to him just calming him down keeping him cool Tendalka's 36 facing Thompson charges again Ian Smith takes the catch, Graham Collins didn't even bother to put his finger up, Tendoka knew he'd got the edge, straight through to Smith, and Tendoka carried on. So Tendoka is out for 36, 163 for 6, and in the end, the inexperience of Tendoka costing India another wicket. Well, a great effort from him, but really, he should have realised that there's still nine overs and a couple of balls to go. That was more like a 48 over rather than a 40 over slog. Aaron Moray is the new batsman for India. So two experienced players and two hard hitting players out there. So the danger isn't over for New Zealand yet. Thompson to Moray. That's well run. Moray's been watching Dean Jones and David Boone play. Thompson to Capel there. Three balls left in the over. Past Hadley at point. And it's four. The Indian supporters love that. Short and a little wide from Thompson. Capel there just chopping it down through backward point past Richard Hadley. And that's a boundary. It's caught. It was a wide delivery. Moray paying the price for chasing one straight to run for the point. Rutherford having replaced Richard Hadley in that fielding position for this over. Straight to Ken Rutherford. Takes a comfortable catch at about head height. And Morrow's out for a couple. 173 for seven. Here's Thompson though, bowling very wide. And Morrow could almost be said to be a little bit unlucky that he chased it that wide. It probably should have been called wide or would have been had he not gone wide. And good fortune for New Zealand and for Rutherford and Martin Crow and Thompson. Capital Dev is 22. AJ Shane is the new player, and he's out now to face Shane Thompson. It's past Jeff Crow. 
And now they've taken off for the single. Hadley's throw comes to the bowler's end. The danger was down at the wicketkeeper's end where Kapil Dev was running to. But it's a single for AJ Sharma. He's off the mark. 175 for seven. There's Kapil Dev on strike. Kapil Dev on 23. of the responsibility for a competitive Indian score resting on the shoulders of the experienced Kapil Dev as Mark Rapatch's throw is big, too big for Smith, and they get an extra run. Rapatch not really realising that he was throwing downwind there, and it really took off once he put it up there. It's too big for Smith, so it's 3 to uh, Kapil Dev, he's 26. Smith working away into it, bowling to AJ Sharma. Past Jeff Crow. and has to do the fielding, gets to the ball quickly, gets his throw in the air, and there's only two runs. That rain, it's drizzle really, isn't it? It's, it's quite thick at the moment, coming in on this brisk northerly. Smeaton's going to continue, ball into Kappel there, if he hits high, wide and handsome, and out to the fence for four. Well, it looks like they might be going off. Yes, well, maybe you can't see with the glasses, but that's the first qualification for an umpire anyway. It's not being able to see, isn't it? So it's quite moist out there. The players are going off ahead of the umpire's discussion about it. So 45 overs and three balls have been bowled as they go off because of the rain. 45 and a half overs gone. We've got uh, four and a half to go, four overs and three balls. The Indian run rate, 4.32. Henry Blofeld has rejoined me. Henry, did you by any chance happen to hear of any announcement regarding a reduction in the number of overs in the innings? My dear, I think I wasn't. I was listening to you, but that will come up very shortly. So it's Ned now, bowling to Kappel there. Pulled away, just over the top of Jeff Crow, and it's raced off to the boundary for four. Good ball hit from Kappel there. But I'll tell you what, Jeff Crow wasn't far from pulling that one in. My goodness me, that was a marvellous stroke there, wasn't it? He judged it, I mean, he hit it over Jeff Crow, uh, over by, I think, at three feet. And Cap already is hitting the ball in the way that he used to in his golden days. And it's rather exciting. We've seen some fine strokes. It wouldn't surprise me, Peter, with there was such a short absence, I wouldn't think they will actually knock down the overall number of overs. I think it was five minutes at most, wasn't it? That's right. So the Indian 200 posted as Sneddon bowls to Kapil Dev. Martin Crow takes the sting off and deflects it, and they'll be able to run two as a consequence because the ball didn't go straight down to Ken Rutherford. But unfortunate that for New Zealand, Martin Crow made a valiant effort to get there. Rutherford had to come in off the long off fence. Hadley to Sharma. That's caught. Ian Smith takes the catch as Sharma tried to crash it away through the offside. And AJ Sharma's innings comes to an end with his score of 12 and the 207 for 8 in the 47 home. And uh, Sharma walked and umpire Khan just nearly had to stick his finger up. I didn't actually know he bothered in the end. Uh, <laughs> a very easy one. And of course that has almost made it almost certain that we'll only get one more over after this one now because that was what the Indians didn't want to do to lose that wicket. We've got Wasson coming out. He's not the worst player. He hit 50, didn't he, in that test match in Auckland. Um, but I think the hands of the clock now are on 25 past one. At half past, it's the cut-off point. So I think there'll be uh, just the last ball of this over. And then probably just, I think the New Zealanders will make sure there's not time for more than one after that.
Hawkins now going to stay out there. Campbell Dev is out. 2.19 for nine in the 48th over. The umpires can worry about the time, but look at this again. Look at the near collision. That's Jeff Crow running back there. And Rutherford coming into the picture now. So Narendra Hi. Hewani coming out at number 11 for India. There's one ball left in this over, which is Morrison's ninth. It's the 48th of the innings. I suppose this is the sort of moment. A, a batsman of Hawani's doubtful pedigree he might get an inside or even an outside edge. He looks a fairly, a fairly unlikely figure, doesn't he? Fine leg spin ball. And gosh, he bowled well against Australia on Saturday, didn't he? Oh, Carol, not hard. 14th over. And got Taylor early. It's caught. Well, it will be lunch more or less on time after all. Hawani goes first ball. Hadley gets his second wicket time. India are all out for 221. Hawani caught by Martin Crowe from the bowling of Hadley for North. Full toss. I suppose the only surprise thing Peter about that was he actually hit it with the middle of the bat. So India all out from the second ball of their 49th and what would have been their final over for 221. The top scorer was Keppel. Their 46 of 38 deliveries, including that six off Danny Morrison, which went into the terraces beyond mid-wicket. Three players got to 36, Tendulka, Mandraka and Prabhaka, but three of the Indians were run out. 221, the Indians score from 48 overs and two balls. There's the first run for New Zealand, taken by Martin Crowe, and he wants the second, bit of hesitation, as Jeff just hesitated at the striker's end to see whether Martin was coming back, and two runs to get underway. Well, that's not a bad ball, it's going down to the fence. New Zealand get four runs, rather fortuitously. Crowe got, Crowe got an outside edge. It seemed to pitch well short of the slip field. And has gone for four. Yes, well, it was a lovely ball which swung away and seemed more off the pitch as Crow assembled the defensive stroke and the movement of the ball towards the offside took the ball from the edge and bouncing short of Vinsaka. But a lovely ball from Keppel there, just running it away from Crow. Whipped away nicely by Crow. That's a good shot. Beautifully timed. And a second boundary for Martin Crow, and it's 14 without loss in the fifth. Oh, full toss, driven, should get four for this. Yes, that's going, and Jeff Crow is certainly not wasting that one. Bad ball from Campbell Dev, over pitching, just nicely placed outside the off stump, and Jeff Crow did the rest, hitting it away for four. Out, put behind. He goes to slash him through the offside. Umpire Cowan gives the decision in favour of India. There seemed no doubt amongst the Indians. There seemed some doubt with Martin Crow, but the end result is he's gone. You never know, do you? A Martin Crow stood there and made it quite clear that he didn't want people to think that he'd hit it. Whether in fact he didn't hit it um, is another question, but. Almost so often nowadays, when a batsman's given out court of the wicket, one sees batsmen doing this sort of thing. It may be genuine disappointment, uh, but as I say, it might be a little bit of disguise. 33 for one, New Zealand, with Martin Crow out. So Andrew Jones, the man coming in at number three for New Zealand, and big responsibility coming on his shoulders with the departure of Martin Crow. Andrew Jones has finally got his first run. Bit of an inside edge, but it's down to fine leg. He's run well and he's got two. Here comes Watson bowling to Jones. Into the leg side field, through the gap. He won't go all the way to the fence, but it's three. As Mandrake does the fielding. Andrew Jones is five, and New Zealand go to 42 for one. Jeff Crow looks reasonably fluent. Playing against uh, the leg spinner. He's turned that one around the corner. Tendulka rushing in from long leg, and that's well run. Jeff Crow's back for two in the end pretty comfortably. 
was very intelligent cricket from Jeff Crow because he didn't hit the ball with much force. And Tendulka, who was right down on the fence virtually at fine leg, had to run the best part of 50 or 60 metres to get to the ball. And Crow in the end had time to complete the two. So good intelligent cricket from Jeff Crow. So let's take a look at the comparative scoring rates of the two sides. There's India's graph getting steeper as it uh, gets towards or it's got towards the end. And New Zealand, as that score would indicate, identically or virtually identical to India with their rate of scoring. Well placed by Jones. There's a big chase on here for AJ Sharma. And Jones has got three. There was no sweeper out deep on the offside once the cover field was pierced. New Zealand's 50 up off the second ball at the 17th over. Jones runs quickly. Appeal for the run and he's out. Andrew Jones has run out. It was always going to be a close thing. Andrew Jones got away quickly. At the single just a wee bit too cheeky as far as New Zealand were concerned. And Jones has run out for nine. It's 55 for two. That's disaster for New Zealand because Crow hit it really far too close to the field. It gave him every chance to be able to knock him over. And you can see there the wickets have been broken and Andrew Jones is just coming into the picture. So really bad luck for Jones and disaster for New Zealand. 55 for two. Well, the new batsman for New Zealand will be Mark Greatbatch. So things in the New Zealand innings so far are going pretty much the same as they did in the Indian innings. Hewani to bowl to Greatbatch. Greatbatch takes the long handle to the leg spinner. And that's four runs. Good bold shot. Well, there was nothing complicated about that. He came down the pitch, swung with the spin, and uh, away it went. And well played. And that, of course, is the virtue of having a left-hander to play a leg spinner, isn't it? So the run rate required is getting up towards six. Important time here with the two spinners on. And it's Hiwani now bowling to Jeff Crow. Appeal for the court behind, and they get it. Took a long time to decide, Graham Cowns. And in fact, the wicketkeeper had arrived down at the bowler's end by the time the finger went up, I think. Yes, I must say, um, uh, little Moray has very much uh, the same principle behind the stumps as um, the Pakistani wicketkeeper Salim Youssef, who goes running like mad straight towards the umpire. And of course, the danger is when you get a delayed a delayed decision like that you wonder if the appeal itself or the menace in the appeal didn't help it I'm sure it didn't but um, Jeff Crow did react did he not as though there was some doubt about that uh, when the appeal went up and indeed when he was given so there's Ken Rutherford coming out now with Jeff Crow dismissed to four 26 at 68 for three Rutherford turns fine, he should get two here. Oh, they should have gone for two, no question about that. However, they settle on the one. Yes, the two fielders down there managed to run into each other and, and, and one of them seems to be hurt. I think that's the young Tendulkar down there, isn't it? who yes. again showed his sight in experience then and that I think one of them should have said mine or yours or maybe they both said yours <laughs> he looks in rather a lot of pain he's lying down there on his back and um... so then but Tendulkar he, departs he's obviously in great pain though isn't he Grant 69 for three the Sharma the great match last ball of the over and they can get one as Prabhaka just makes a slide up. In fact, they're going to get two. Just a touch untidy from the Indians. Prabhaka not getting down to it. Didn't field it cleanly. A bonus run for Great Badge. So he's 20. It's 82 for three. So nearly well, 29 overs gone. This is a 49 overs per side match. So 20 overs left. Grant Nisbet and now to join John Morrison. And it's Hawani to Boulder Rutherford. Full toss, but it hasn't really got a hold of it. And 
and the batsmen have just the two runs. Seemed to mistime that a bit, John. Hit it perhaps a little high on the bat. Yes, he did. It just sat up there, didn't it? And uh, I'm sure on many occasions, Ken Rutherford had hit that a mile. He just seemed to overhead it a bit, and as a result, didn't get hold of it properly. This one's coming down very fine. Hawani's chasing. And he's really going for it, Hawani. Gets to it now, and they'll get three on Hawani's throw. And a came from the backs of Mark Greatbatch. So the New Zealand 100 comes up in the 31st over. Here is Hawani bowling to Rutherford, who swings it away. That's a big hit. Six runs. signal for but it looked to me like it was a six well he was a bit unlucky the umpire because that's a part of the ground where the line is well inside the perimeter of the ground and in fact it, he saw it bounce on the grass he wouldn't be able to see the line from where he stands so he was only calling what he saw the ball bouncing on the grass Well, the incident that we saw a short time ago has now been sorted out. Graham Cowan has just gone down to the scorer's box, down towards the scoreboard, and indicated to the scorers that it was a six. So that's good that everything is sorted out. I'm back! Oh, I think it's been put down. It has. And of all people, Azaruddin has decked it. Would have been an outstanding catch, though, with the ball not travelling quite as fast as Ezra Dean expected. And it was a long way away from him. It was just popped in the air. He scooped it almost, and Ezra Dean diving full length. What a good catch it would have been. Nicely timed by great batch. And it's through. Four runs. Rahman couldn't stop it. Timed it beautifully, didn't he? It, it looked as though he doesn't have to do for one when he played it, and it fairly raced away across the grass. Love the stroke. Rahman made a lot of ground here and tried to finish it off with his boot, but just couldn't manage it. That's 50 for Mark Ray Patch. That's his fourth 50 in one day cricket. Well received by the crowd here at the Basin Reserve. End of the over at 140 for three. Look at Great Batch's scoring chart. I always love that uh, wagon wheel there. It does show you, doesn't it, that he plays it really pretty well everywhere. Driving straight, Great Batch. Good shot. Oh, Hawani. He had a man backing him up. And they got two. Hawani wasn't a great attempt, was it? He didn't know whether to stick out a hand or a foot. You always go with a hand. And the ball bounced. Um, you watch Hawani coming in from the right uh, on your picture there. He really didn't make a very good attempt at it. Lifted by Batch, and he could be caught. He is caught. Caught by Prabhaka. And right Batch goes for 53. New Zealand lose their fourth look at 148. Great back, banging his bat on the ground, angry with himself. You see, there he goes again, poor chap. He did play a marvellous job for New Zealand. And of course he's blaming himself because he's a terrific player. And um, New Zealand have got no one who fights harder for their cause. But I think he, he, he did all that was asked of him. And um, it's now up to the others to carry on the good work. He didn't quite get a sort of fluent swing at it. I think if he'd gone all the way, he, started, he, was, he came forward and drove almost as an afterthought. Yes, big blow for India. Change of things on a batting order. Richard Handy coming out to a place. Another left-hander in great patch. He was up like this, trying to get it over the head of Prabhaka. But in the end, it was quite a comfortable catch to the man running in from Long Ron. And that was the end of Mark Great Patch. A very good effort from him, out for 53, and a good partnership with Rutherford. India's graph getting steeper as they came towards the end of their innings, got to 221. New Zealand, almost identical. Yeah. 
Headley works it away through the mid wicket area. AJ Sharma's at the ball in a hurry. A bad throw, and they get a bonus run. Dushar and Singh now coming back, and Hanley, brother for brother, would have been run out if Watson had been able to gather in the ball. The Indian field being put under pressure. They couldn't respond. It should have been just one run. As they came back for the second, Rutherford should have been run out down at the bowler's end. If Watson had been able to catch the ball, Rutherford was gone. Luck for New Zealand. So it's Rutherford on 37. 160 for four. Prabhaka bowls to him. Well bowled by Prabhaka, but beautifully played by Rutherford. Toppled there to pick it up inside the boundary down a deep third man. They've taken two. That's all there'll be. That's a good throw back from Kapil Dev. Was he? No. I tell you what, that looked a very straight delivery. It hit his pad. It just about got through as Rutherford was walking all over the crease. Well, that's a pretty good shot. Mr. Watson doesn't seem very pleased, does he? But uh, umpire Graham Cowan, he says no. Let's see where this one hit. Rutherford was doing the two-step down the other end. Hit him on the back foot. And again, I think it would have missed Leagstone. Rutherford for 44 and they lose their fifth wicket at 174 which is the last thing they wanted Ken Rutherford's played splendidly with great pitch the two of them batted beautifully in tandem and he comes down the pitch and if you miss a straight one obviously you're in trouble but a wonderful knock from Rutherford just a pity he couldn't keep on going for a little longer Ian Smith with a big responsibility now to get started again with Hadley, his partner in Auckland, in that fabulous third test match. Hadley works it just over the top and out to the fence for four. Hadley hits it straight back over the bowler's head. What a great hit. Four runs. Magnificent shot from Richard Hadley. 12 runs off the over. And it's 186 for 5 after 44. Big blow by Richard Hadley off the last ball of the previous over. And who needs streaking when you can see shots like that? That was a magnificent shot because there was long off on the boundary, there was long on on the boundary. Ezra Dean had the field placed exactly right. Hadley hits it straight again. Gershwin, and he had to be pretty quick too. Well, thrilling stuff, isn't it? What a great finish to this day. Smith. Smith hammers it away. Down, he's caught. Gershwin takes the catch. Low to the ground. And New Zealand lose Ian Smith. Well, that's a vital blow. Ian Smith gone. He thumped it down to mid-off, but Sharon Singh was equal to the task. Gave himself room, hit it on the up, hit it hard. It was dropping. Wondered whether it carried for a moment, but I don't think there's any question about that. And Sharon Singh on there for Tendulkar, who was injured earlier. But Ian Smith gone. 27 runs from 23 balls as Shane Thompson comes out. Hadley's on 26. New Zealand at 199 for six in the 46th over. That's a good shot. That's going to go to the fence, I think. Great work out on the boundary. Capital Dev it was. And it's three runs. No, that's magnificent fielding. Azarudin is changing the field. Prabhak has got plenty to say. Now the batsmen are going to have a chat. He did have his fine leg up inside the circle. That's always dangerous if you're trying to bowl in tight because if you stray a little bit and the batsman gets a little touch down fine, it's a certain four. So he's put his fine leg back and he's put his third man up. Hello, he's making another change. He's coming across Azarudin to this leg side. And he's going to come into mid-wicket and he's pushing 
then sunk around the square leg. It's, it's all very delicate scientific stuff. Certainly been meticulous with his field placing as a redeem, but I think we're just about set to go. Shane Thompson's been waiting a while. Now he's facing Prabaka. It's high in the air. And oh, that's a great catch. Catch taken by Wasson. What a beauty. Well, Shane Thompson gone. He tried to give himself a bit of room and hit it over the offside. He didn't get hold of it. It went high. Adel Wasson was weaving around all over the place underneath it. He didn't seem to have it properly lined up at all. Got a fair bit of height. Didn't get any distance. But look at him. He actually fell over and then caught it from his knees. So marvellous effort in the end. But he seems to have hurt himself. Gavin Larson, his second his third match for New Zealand and he comes in at a stage when there are what nine balls to bowl, be bowled last ball of this over from Prabhaka he's chopped it on end of Larson and the end of another New Zealand batsman so New Zealand will need to score 11 runs off the last over to win the game here's the dismissal trying to give himself room Larson it was a good ball wasn't there to cut but he had to try and do something because he had to get back to ball he didn't manage it so it's martin snedden who goes out to join richard hadley hadley will have the first ball of this last over and new zealand need to score 11 off the over to win 10 over 10 no runs it's a tie now i believe it is a tie if they finish on uh, the same number of runs john and it has nothing to do with number of wickets that's fallen and so it should be I think uh, they have different uh, overs and wickets and runs and what have you. If you've got the same number of runs, uh, it should be a tie in the limited over game. High drama. There we are, 11 required off the last over. Papal Devs waving his arms like a traffic officer. First ball of the over. Well, it went there all right. It went fine down the third man. And there was a gap there. It's pretty difficult to play a shot there, but Richard Hadley got an edge. If you can get it there, it's ideal. Going for the big hit. Got an edge through the slip region. There's no one down there. The third man is wide, and it raced across the turf. So, five deliveries, seven runs. Amazing finish. Capel Dev to bowl the second ball of the last over. Hadley again. Coming for a second. He had the scramble. And he does. Well, that's good running by Richard Hadley. It wasn't a good throw. In the end, there was no real panic. But he had to make the decision, and it was a good one because remember, New Zealand are eight down. Ball clear of any fieldsmen, away they go for the second run. Three to win. Well, what a marvellous over from Richard Hadley. Three balls gone, and he's got eight runs. He hasn't changed the expression on his face all day, Richard Hadley. It's very sensible batting by Richard Hadley. He's just finding the gaps uh, and very sensible to lift that delivery over the top of the bowler. Oh dear, wants the field in now. Hadley hits it again. Gonna look for the second again. Snedden running blind is run out. Snedden is out. So New Zealand go are going to need two runs with two balls to go and the last batsman in. So Hadley goes to meet Morrison. There's always a smile on Danny Morrison's face. Hadley's going to have to face. There are two balls to go. They've got to work something out here. The ideal, of course, would be for Hadley to get the runs and not force Danny Morrison to face the last ball. So two balls to go. New Zealand need two to win. They only have one wicket left, remember. He is so... Uh, he doesn't need to get out here, does he? <laughs> Two 
two runs to win. Here's Keppel Dev to Hadley. Absolutely delighted.